Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Thinking in Patterns, Level 3, Similarities and Differences. When you're looking for patterns, you should always start by defining what's the system that we're going to investigate. But once you've done that, let's just start looking for patterns. What similarities do we see in the system and then what differences do we see in the system? Because by looking for similarities and differences, we can better understand the system and we can eventually start to sort the different parts of the system, classify them, and, and more importantly, analyze. Um, the object that represents patterns is always this glass prism because it allows us to see things that we normally couldn't. I would really want to point your attention to this point because what it's doing is it allows us to break things into things that are alike and things that are different. And by doing that, we can better understand those components. After watching this video, you should be able to find similarities and differences in things like sequenced cubes, or even living systems like a cat and a kitten. But I'm going to start by showing my thinking as we look through similarities and differences in these three solid objects. And then when I'm done with that, I'll give you a different system that you can kind of dig into. So the first thing you should always do when you're looking at a system is define the system. In this case, we're going to be looking at the system of these three solids. And what we're looking for are just patterns. How are these three solids similar and how are they going to be different? So the first thing I would do is try to figure out, they're all made of wood, um, they're all green. So I would just start writing down what are some similarities that we could use to sort these. So what I've shown here is that they all are made of the same material, which is wood. So I could sort all of these objects into a category that is those that are made up of wood. I could do the same thing with those that are made of green and it would be the same sort. Or I could do the same thing with those that are made of, of uh, with a height of around three centimeters. And so I'm learning a little bit about these objects, but I'm going to learn a lot more when I start thinking about what are the differences between all these objects. So let me write the differences here. So three things that I've noticed are the number of sides that they have, like a sphere doesn't have any sides. Are they rollable? And then are they uniform? So let me write these down below. So now I can look at these uh, patterns of differences. Are they uniform or not? And I could say, well, the cylinder, if I sort them, the cylinder is not uniform. It has a side that's flat and it's going to have a side that's rounded. Whereas the sphere and the, and the square are going to be uniform throughout. No matter which way I turn it, they're going to look the same. So that tells me a little bit about these objects. I could also look at, are they rollable or not? So, a cube is not going to be rollable, but a cylinder and a sphere are. And there's something about the way that a cylinder rolls versus a sphere that tells me a little bit more about it. Or the number of sides. So we go from a cube that has six sides to a cylinder that has two, and then a sphere that has no sides. So that'd be another way to sort it. And so the power of similarities and differences is it allows us to more carefully sort, classify, and analyze objects. So what I want to do is clean all this off and then I'm going to give you three uh, or I'm going to give you an additional system and what I'd like you to do is look for similarities and differences and how we could use those to sort the material. All right, I set up a new system for you. I've got five writing implements from a ballpoint pen to a crayon, dry erase marker, sharpie and pencil. So what I want you to try to do is pause the video, go through and list similarities, differences, and then start thinking about how we could sort those. You could use a piece of paper or use the Google slide deck that's below this video. When you're done, unpause the video and then let's compare our thinking. All right, now that you're back, what I'd like to do is start thinking about what are the similarities between all of these writing implements? Let, let me write those down.
Okay, so the similarities I see is that they're all used for writing or communicating. The shape, in general, they all have a cylindrical shape with a point at the end. And then the length, they're all about the length of your hand, which makes sense because you're going to use your hand. Um, next, let me show you what I think the differences are. Okay, so uh, some of the differences I noticed, patterns I noticed, was the color. There's blue versus black. And so I could sort these writing implements into those that are blue and those that are back, black. Those that are blue are going to be the ballpoint pen. Those that are black are going to be everything down below. We could also look at um, their permanency. So I would say the ones that aren't permanent would be the pencil and the dry erase marker. And then can you sharpen it? So a pencil and a crayon can both be sharpened. So I could sort those into things that can be sharpened. And then these other ones are not going to be able to be sharpened. And so um, the idea with finding similarities and differences is that it allows us to more carefully sort material, analyze material. You should learn how to do it with concrete objects so you can eventually move on to more uh, complex natural phenomena to understand. And so what I would encourage you to do is try a couple of the challenges below. We've got a Google slide deck with a video of some sequenced uh, cubes or look for similarities and differences in a kitten and a cat because what that tells us is a lot about inheritance and variation. So that's patterns, that's level three on patterns, similarities and differences, and I hope that was helpful.